solving linear systems by linear combinations. It is also known as elimination because we look to eliminate one of the variables. A linear system, also known as a system of equations, is two or more equations involving the same variables. A lot of times you're going to see a brace outside the two equations to show that they're part of the same system. And as you see here, you have the variables x and y. You can also have three equations and you can use other variables, a and b in this case. You can have variables on the left or the right side mixed up a little bit. Sometimes the linear system can be represented by a graph and even the matrix. The solution of a linear system is the ordered pair x, y that satisfies all the equations in the system. The intersection of two lines would be a solution of this system. And when you have variables that are not x and y, just write them in alphabetical order. Finally, additive inverses are two values whose sum is zero. We say that the values cancel out. Uh, negative 9m and 9m are additive inverses because they add up to zero. And also 3y and negative 3y will combine to give us zero. Here are the steps for the linear combinations method that we're going to use to solve that linear system. First, arrange the equations with like terms in columns. As you can see, the x terms, the y terms, and then also the number on the right side of the equal sign are already arranged. So we can move on to step two. Are the coefficients of one variable additive inverses? Well, 3y and negative 3y are additive inverses because when they're added, they give a zero. So we're going to go ahead and combine, in step three, the equations and solve for the remaining variable. 2x minus 2x over here give us x and 7 plus 4 is 11. We solved for the x variable. Step 4, to solve for the other value, we're going to substitute x equals 11 into one of the original equations. You can choose whatever equation you want. We're going to substitute that 11 into the first equation. Seems a little bit easier. And here you just go ahead and solve for y. 2 times 11 is 22. Subtract 22 from each side and then divide both sides by 3. We get that y equals negative 5. We have our solution. It is 11 for the x value and negative 5 for the y value. Step 5. Check your solution by substituting it into each equation in the system. So it's very important that, one, you use parentheses when you substitute. So we get, for the first one, 7 equals 7, which means that it does work out. But you also have to make sure to check it in the other equation. And when you use order of operations on each side, we get 4 equals 4. That works out as well. The conclusion is that 11 negative 5 is a solution of the system because it satisfies both equations. Let's try solving another linear system. Uh, this one over here, you can tell it's a linear system because the brace over there shows that the two equations are part of the same system. All right, first we need to arrange the equations with like terms and columns. As you can see, the x's and y's are not lined up over here. So we're going to rewrite the first equation exactly as it is, but notice that I put a negative 1 as our x coefficient. And the other equation, I can switch the x and the 5y because they're in the same side. So I'm going to write it as 1x plus 5y equals 12. Step 2. Are the coefficients of one variable additive inverses? Yes, they are. Negative 1x and positive 1x are additive inverses. So we can go ahead to step 3. We're going to combine these two equations. and We get 7y equals 7. We divide both sides by 7 and get that y equals 1. Moving on to step 4, we're going to substitute that 1 into one of the equations. The second equation seems a little bit easier because there are less negatives there to, to deal with. And when you substitute, use the equation exactly the same way it was written the first time. Use parentheses to substitute 1. And we solve for x by subtracting 5 on each side and we get x equals 7. 
our solution is x equals 7, y equals 1. It could also be written that way. Let's do a quick check for step 5. Substitute both values into the top equation. We get a true statement. Substitute both values into the other equation. It also gives us a true statement. And this confirms that 7, 1 is a solution. Here's another linear system. And this time, after I write out the equations, I notice that there are no additive inverses. So right here, you have to decide what are you going to get rid of. And it could be anything. I'm just going to go with, I'm going to try to cancel out the x values. All right, so in order to do that, I'll keep the top equation the same. So nothing new there. The bottom equation, though, I'm going to double. I'm going to multiply each side by 2. And that gives me 2x minus 8y equals 18. Very important. That 9 over here needs to be multiplied as well by 2 to get the 18. I still don't have additive inverses, but I am a little bit closer. These numbers, 2x and 2x, are close to being additive inverses if we multiply one of these equations by negative 1. I'll multiply the bottom one by negative 1, but it could have been any. And I get the following values. Uh, luckily now, the 2x and the minus 2x give us 0. And we go ahead and solve the system. 3y plus 8y is 11y. And negative 4 plus negative 18 is negative 22. Divide both sides by 11, and we get y equals negative 2. Uh, looking at both equations, I think the top equation might be a little bit simpler. But again, it really does not matter. We should get the same solution no matter what. And substitute negative 2 in for the y. And I get 2x minus 6 equals negative 4. It's a two-step equation from here. We're going to add 6 to each side. Divide each side by 2. And that gives us x equals 1. Therefore, our solution is 1, negative 2. From here, it's good advice to, to check it. And if you don't have time to do a formal check, just do a quick mental, mental one. 2 times 1 plus 3 times negative 2. That is, in fact, negative 4. And then if I substitute 1 for x and negative 2 for y in the second equation, end up getting 1 plus 8, which is 9. So that confirms the solution is correct. Here's an example where we are going to have to multiply both equations by a certain number. I'm going to try to turn the x values into additive inverses. It doesn't really matter what you do. Just make sure your process is correct. And a little trick I like to use is to multiply each equation by the opposite coefficient. Uh, however, you think, if you think about this, if I multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom by 3, I'll have two positive numbers. So instead, I multiply the top equation by negative 5 and the bottom equation by 3. And here we go ahead and multiply. Again, make sure you multiply both sides. And we get the following. Take your time when you're doing this. Do it correctly. The x values are now additive inverses. They cancel out. And we go ahead and combine the rest of the system. We get negative 5y equals 20. Uh, y is being multiplied by negative 5, so we divide both sides by negative 5. And we get that y equals negative 4. We take that negative 4 and substitute it into either of the other equation. I chose to go with the first equation. Again, it does not matter. Just be careful when you substitute. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. That's how I received this value here. And now just subtract 8 on both sides and then divide each side by 3, we get x equals negative 2. Therefore, our solution is negative 2, negative 4.